Hey, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 1992 Senior Oxford Elgin Football Championship game here at Emsley Field in Pinafore Park, St. Thomas. Uh, the kickoff team will be uh, Central Elgin in the black, and Arthur Bowden will receive uh, to the left. They'll be in the white and red. Along with me is Ian Talbot, uh, one of the coaches for Central Elgin Juniors. My name is Wade Walker. Ian, uh, this should be a good matchup. We had a game earlier this year where Voden prevailed 35-14. What do you expect from this game? Should be a tight game, Wade. Uh, weather conditions here are uh, good for uh, football, I guess, as, as, far as, as far as temperature goes. The uh, field looks a little wet, though. It, uh, it's a nice day. It's uh, not, very, not very cold. It's a little wet on the field, but I'm sure the players will uh, not mind playing in this kind of game uh, today for the final game. It won't bother them after they get a little wet and a, and a little dirty. Kicking the ball off uh, for St. Thomas will be number 24, David Lepischek. To return it will be uh, number 29, Scott Fennell, number 27, Brad Thompson, and number 30, Wayne Lucas. Tony Millis, the referee, signals it in. And Dave Lepschek kicks one. A good kick. Number 27, Brad Thompson, cuts it up the left side. Tries to get outside. Kevin Bill, number 44, just misses, and there's three or four other Titans to make the tackle. So they'll start about their 25. The Voden, Voden offensive line is uh, very big. Uh, They'll run the ball right at you, and then, and then when they get you to commit on the inside, they'll, they'll start taking it outside. So they've got quite a powerful offense uh, against Central. As I said before, they scored 35 points, primarily on the ground, but you, you can't cheat too much or they'll throw it. First down and 10, Arthur Bowden on their own 25-yard line. Jake Weave, a quarterback. Okay, the, the quarterback, number 19, Jake Weave, goes in behind center. Uh, Arthur Bowden in a full house backfield, wishbone set. 36, Randy Kohler. Hand off to Kohler up the middle. Breaks through the contain. And he gets to about the 45. First down, and 10, Arthur Voden, first, down, first down, Arthur Voden. They got about 15 on that. That's their main man, uh, Randy Kohler. Probably about 6'2 and 220 or 230. Uh, quite a load to bring down when he gets ahead of Steamian. Yeah, he sure looks like he's uh, getting to the line fairly easily there. He's been their bread and butter running back all season. Again, Arthur Bowden brings it up. First, first and ten. Again, wishbone backfield. Uh, they run two tight ends and a slot back left. Weave gets the ball, hands it off to the up back number 23. He cuts it up the middle. Good for about nine. Almost got a first down. Number 32, Gary Pock. Excuse me, number 33, Shane Moyes. Got about nine on that. We're at about the 51-yard uh, line. Correct that, that's about eight. It'll be second and about two. So far, we've seen what Voden likes to do primarily, just give it to their big backs and uh, run it right out the defense, challenge them. Again, same formation, early motion. Number 30 runs off tackle left, and that's uh, Wayne Lucas. Close to a first down. It's a first down, so he got two. First down, Arthur Voden at about 53. They now have the slot back to the right side, number 67, Mike Steele. Counterplay to Kohler, and he's cut down in the backfield for a loss of about three. Tackle by number 37, Hassan Restum. They're testing out that uh, central defensive line, Wade. Sorry, what was that? They're testing out their uh, central's defensive line. Central's uh, holding, up, holding up fairly well so far. Yeah, well, they gave up a couple of 10 and 15 yard gains, but they stuffed them there. So now it's second and 13 for Arthur Voden. Slot back left, full house backfield. Sweep left to number 30 to Lucas. He turns it upfield. Gets about 10, maybe. Flag down on the play. Flag down way in the backfield. Quarterback for Arthur Voden, number 19, Jake Weeb, says it's holding on Voden. The referees are talking to number 24, David Lepischek, uh, to decide what they want to do. 
they got about eight yards on that play, and it would have been would have been third and about five, and Central's accepted the penalty. Holding penalty against Arthur Voden brings the ball. Holding back. against Arthur Voden, and it will be second and about 15. Second, and, excuse me, 22. They're back at their own 40. Motion right, counter play to Kohler, and they stack him up on the line. Doesn't look like he got anything on that play. They had early motion going to the right, uh, trying to make it look like a sweep, and they countered back with Kohler. That's probably not a, a bad play with this muddy field if you can get Central to uh, start cheating to the left. Yeah, exactly. Get those uh, the, the, the linemen to start rolling out with the uh, leading blocks there. Okay, Arthur Voden comes up. It's... Uh, Third down and about 20, 22 here again. Uh, slot back right, early motion right. They pitch it out to number 30. And Van Berkel gets him and lets him go. And number 30 finally draw, pulls him down, Mike Friends. That was a tough penalty for them. They, uh, they're on the fourth and they're, uh, I guess, about on the 37, 35. Right, after they got that... Uh, that loss, they then got it to third and about three, but that holding penalty dropped him back, and they just couldn't get enough going in those last two plays. So now we're looking at fourth and about 25. So we're expecting a punt from Arthur Bowden. Number 19, uh, Jake Weeb, back to punt. Number 90, Joe Brown is the center, be snapping. This has got to be tough to snap when the ball gets a little wet in this muddy, muddy conditions. Got that away, all right, kicks it. It's coming right in front of us here. And Mike Sunderland, number 88, picks up the ball, flags on the play. And I would have to say that it'd probably be no yards. We'll have to wait and see from the referees what the call is. The referee today is Tony Millis. Central log and first down. It was a no yards penalty called against number 41, Scott Hindley. So they'll get 15 on this, and they'll be in uh, Arthur Bowden territory. 15-yard penalty brings the ball up to center field. First down and 10, Central Alga. So first and 10, Central. Center field. Uh, at about 50, 52 yard line of Arthur Bowden, just over half. So now we're going to look at our first look at the Central Alga offense. Scott Nugent, number nine, the quarterback. Mike Sunderland, wide left, number 88, and number 90. Nugent, number 90, Joe Jacoby, is the uh, wide receiver to the right. Early motion right, handoff up the middle, number 23, Vanderwerf. He gets about four. Tackle by uh, Randy Colder there, number 36. Okay, so it's second and, well, maybe about seven, so they got three there. Number 11, Sam Boomerod runs the play in to Scott Nugent, who is uh, quarterbacking central today. Again, they, they come out with a double wide receiver set. A boomerad right and Jacoby left. Slot back left and two running backs in the backfield. Early motion. motion. Off tackle right. Number 33. Number 33, Mike Hamsey. Appears to have ha Mike appears Hamsey to have the first down. Morgan. Yes, first down. So he got about 10 on that. Uh, nice, nice play by the offensive line to get a hole for Mike Hamsey to get through on the right side. Yeah, that was really nice hole. The uh, the corner did a nice job containing, but the uh, they kicked the corner out and Hamsey went up uh, inside. Nice run. That play set up by the fake handoff to Vanderwerf up the middle. He got about three or four the first time. So uh, with that fake up the middle, you're going to keep the interior linebackers there, and it gives it, uh, Hamsey a chance to get outside. Again, Central comes up with two backs in the backfield and slot back left. Motion right again. Fakes twice, Nugent steps up, throws over the middle to number 81, Mark Payne. It's incomplete. Their central ran the third play in, in basically what's called a series in football. They'll run one up the middle, and then they'll fake that and hand off somewhere else as they did the second play, an off tackle right, and then they, they faked that play and came back with a pass. The offensive line gave Scott plenty of time to pass there. He just... Uh, couldn't connect with number 81, the tight end, Mark Payne. So it'll be second and 10 at Arthur Bowden 40-yard line. They're throwing with the wind in, the, in, in this quarter, in this direction, as the fans are looking at it going right to left, and that might be a good time to throw the ball because it's obviously a lot easier to throw with the wind. Okay, Central comes out with the tight end left and the slot back right. Motion right, handoff left side. 
a flag. And there's a flag on the play and tackled in the backfield for a loss by number 53, Mike McGugan. Flag's down on the play. It appears to be against Arthur Vodin. Tony Millis, the referee, is talking to the central players. Offside penalty against Arthur Vodin, second down. Number 46. We don't have that in our roster, uh, but it was offside against 46 on Vodin, so it's it's now second and five at the 35 for Central Logan. Mike Casimir, the Central Elgin uh, center, is up on the ball. The left guard is number 66, Jeff McIntyre, and number uh, 61, Jason Cannon, is the left tackle. Handoff left side on a trap play. Looks like they might have got one or just back to the line of scrimmage. A late flag in the defensive backfield. So we're looking at third and four. We'll have to hold off on that decision to see uh, what happens with this flag. Scott Nugent, the quarterback for Central, indicates that it's against Arthur Voden, so the chains are moving. The referees are moving. Unsportsmanlike conduct, Unsportsmanlike conduct moves, the ball down moves the ball down to about the 25. So it'll be first, first and 10 for Central Elgin on, on the Arthur Voden 25. The middle of the field today is... Uh, uh, very muddy and chewed up. The junior game, uh, not that they affected it a whole lot. It was muddy before, but now Central's down in an area that it's a little better footing, so possibly a little better action. Scott Nugent fakes it, rolls out right, throws deep. He's got Mike Sunderland. Oh, and the pass is knocked down. Nice attempt. Excellent pass. Yeah, that was, was great. A, a nice play by the quarterback to get it downfield. Sunderland ran a, a deep in route, and it, it's, it was knocked down by... Uh, the defensive backfielder by Arthur Voden. A nice play by the Voden deep back to time that jump and, and hit the defender in the ball right at the same time. Yes, Central doesn't seem to have, be having any problem giving uh, the, the quarterback enough time. They pass an awful lot. They're probably a 50-50 run pass, so they work a lot on pass blocking because it's a big part of their game, and uh, they'll challenge you to come and get them, and they'll block you, and, and they, they've got an excellent quarterback in Scott Nugent throwing the ball, and the receivers have had a good year catching it. So. We look for a fair amount of passing from Central Elgin. Second and 10 for Central Elgin from the Voden 25. Full house backfield. Motion left. Nugent rolls out. Counter to number 33, Mr. Ham Mike Hamsey. And he gets about five, it appears. Scott Nugent says that uh, they got about five or six. So as we see the sticks, sticks move, it looks like it's third and about five on the 20-yard line. The Arthur Roden defense hasn't given up a whole lot of points this year. Uh, they only give up 14 against Central Elgin, and, and a lot of their games have been under 10, so they've got a very stingy defense. They're in a 4-5 look right now. Nugent drops back, throws early. Tight spiral, number 99, Jacoby, and it's a touchdown to number 90, John Jacoby, in the left corner of the end zone. So on third and five, Central goes back to, uh, back to their game, and they throw it to the left. Sideline to number 90, John Jacoby, who's had a good year for the Titans. Uh, as all the receivers uh, will attest, they like catching the ball from Scott Nugent. Uh, so it's 6-0 for Central Elgin and the convert to come. David Lepischek is the convert and field goal and kickoff man for Central Elgin. He sets up for the single point. The snap's good. The ball's down, and it's up, and it's good. So it's 7-0 for Central Elgin. A strong start by uh, Central Wade. They're, they're showing uh, Voden a, a variety of offensive uh, plays that uh, it's kept Voden off guard by the looks of it so far. Well, if you can keep them, keep them guessing whether you're going right, left, in or out, and throwing the ball, uh, you're going to be a little more effective uh, with an offense that Central has. Uh, Arthur Voden, uh, other than that one penalty, maybe uh, uh, could have had a touchdown. Also, they had a nice drive going. They had a couple, couple runs up the middle, and one was almost broken. So, 
uh, obviously Arthur Bowden's not going to give up. They're going to come back right now, and they're going to look to score and even even this game up at 7-all. And we're still early in the game, as you say. <clears throat> okay, Central Elgin's going to kick off. David Lepischek will kick off. He got the single point to make it 7. Converted that touchdown. Central Elgin averaged 26 points a game and gave up 17. And uh, I'm sure Arthur Bowden, I know some of the scores I've heard were in the 40s. So they have a very, very uh, powerful offense too. David Levishek kicks it off a little shorter. Number 33 gets it for by Shane Moyes uh, and gets it about the 35 yard line. In their last meeting, uh, Wade, how did uh, Bowden and uh, Central matchup. It was a good game. I, I came back a little late. I was I, I took uh, a player to the hospital uh, from the senior team, but I came back and caught the second half. And it was 14-7 uh, at halftime for Arthur Voden. Central scored early in the third quarter to make it 14 all, and then Voden just uh, ball control offense and, and ran the ball and scored three touchdowns and stopped the Central offense. So it was really a, a good first half. Basically tied early in the second half, and then Voden took control late in the second half. So you know they're not about to give up. Handoff up the middle to Granny Kohler is good for one or two. Number 30 for Arthur Voden is a very quick running back, Wayne Lucas, and they'll set that up much like Central sets up their pass run game. They'll set up their inside outside game. Give to Kohler over the left side. Looks like he's good for another two. So it's going to be third down and about six for Arthur Voden. But as I was saying, Randy Kohler will, will run up the middle and, and get you to come in, and then number 30, Wayne Lucas, will get it outside. And he's one of the fastest players in uh, the Oxford Elgin League. And if you cheat too much to the inside, he'll take it outside and. Uh, uh, get big yards on you. Okay, we're third and seven here. Arthur Voden comes up to the line. Full house backfield again, slot back left. Might be a passing situation at third and seven. We'll, we'll see what happens here. Pitch out to the left side to Wayne, to Lucas. He turns it upfield, and he's good for about three or four, but uh, Central holds. It'll be fourth and about four. That'll bring up fourth down and four for Arthur Bowden. Fourth down and four, Arthur Bowden. So it, it would seem to be a, a pun situation, especially this early in the game. You're not going to want a chance uh, fourth and four on your side of midfield. So they'll probably punt. Jake Wheat back to punt number 19 for Arthur Bowden. Deep to receive for Central Elgin is number 88, Mike Sunderland. Weeb gets it away. Good high kick. Sunderland's underneath it. Catches it clean. Tries to break to the outside left. Nice block by number 31. He's cutting it outside. Kohler slows him down. And number 33, Shane Moyes, finishes off the tackle. So Central Elgin starts their, their second series on offense uh, in Arthur Voden territory at about the 52. Some key blocks on that run back, Wade. The... Uh I guess the uh, second man back uh, allowed uh, Central to get about an extra 20 or 30 yards in that play with a, a key block on the inside. Yeah, that was a nice block by number 31, Brandon McVicker. There was a there was a penalty against number 78, White Tyler McGregor, unsportsmanlike conduct. So we're moving the chains further down the field. Uh, it, lo it appears to be a inside the 30. First down, Central Elgin. Yeah, it appears it's about the 26-yard line. The sticks are just getting set now. This is a very important series for Central Elgin. Uh, if they can, if they can punch another score through here, they're going to put a little bit of pressure on the uh, Arthur Bowden offense to come back and start scoring. Uh, I know it's early in the game; it's still the first quarter, but very important drive right here. Mike Hamsey around the right side. On the handoff, uh, looks like a fumble. Arthur Voden re recovers the fumble. Oh, a key play, a key play for Voden there. Wait. Right, that, that's the time they, they've got to come up big. And 
and that might just turn their offense on. Okay, after that good run back and uh, the big penalty, first play we get a fumble after a gain of about six. Uh, the ball was fumbled and recovered by Arthur Bowden. So uh, right about now, it might be a, a key turning point in the game. If, if Bowden can make a nice long drive and tie this game up, uh, it's a whole new ball game here. Arthur Bowden back to the line. They've got uh, two tight ends, slot back right, and a full house backfield again. Hand off to Cole right up the middle. And he's just brought down right at the end by number 30. By number 30, Mike Friends, excuse me. Uh, just got a hold of Kohler's foot or he could have been gone. Randy Cole has been quite a workhorse for uh, Bowden so far in the game. Yeah, I think you'll see him get the ball quite a lot. He's quite a load. He goes both ways, but his endurance is obviously uh, as good as anyone's. He uh, runs the ball well up the middle and, and he just showed a burst of speed right there. So. If you don't get him early, he could be gone on you. He's not, uh, he's not slow. They run the left side, and they get stacked up after a couple yards. Moy's a ball carrier, number 33 for Arthur Bowden. So it's second down and about, about eight. Bowden again up, slot back left. Now they come with the same set, it seems, like a full house wishbone backfield when the slot back just picks the side. Lucas around the left end on a pitch following Kohler. Gets outside and, and uh, gets about six yards. So it'll be third and about four. Third and three. So he's third and, third and five, Arthur Bowden. At about their own 35-yard line. Not a third down situation where you, you'd like it to get to third and two or third and one. Uh, so third and five, the defense can't really plan on a pass and they can't plan on a run. So a situation that we'll just have to wait and see what happens here. Slot back left. Hand off to Kohler up the middle. Stacked up and appears to be short of the first down. So, so far the Central Elgin defense has held uh, the Arthur Voden offense in check here. Um, having such a, a powerful running game um, they've just been they've been contained by by the Central Elgin team so far anyway in this game. Yeah, the uh, the bit of the mud holder in that right now maybe he's got he's got something to do with that. Yeah, you need good footing to get going uh, as a running back and to make a cut. And if you can't get that and you don't feel comfortable, you're not uh, at full steam. So it's it's fourth and about four. We back to punt again for Arthur Voden number 19. He's also the quarterback for Arthur Voden. So again, it's a little early to look for a fake, but that may come into play later on. We punt. punts it. He, it's a little short, of, short punt off to the right side. And uh, it picked up by Lepischek. Cuts up the middle. Comes back to the left. And he's at about uh, his own 50. So Central Elgin will take over again uh, at their own 51-yard line. And it's 7 nothing for Central Elgin. Man down in the field. Uh, but he got up on his, on his own power. So I think he'll have to go out for one play. Okay, the referees for today's game, we have three from Elgin County and two from Oxford County. And then next year when we go down there, there will be three from Oxford and two from Elgin. So it's a, it's a good representation of the, of the two leagues uh, to have. Central Elgin comes out with uh, tight end left and slot back left. Two man backfield. Sunderland wide left, Jacoby wide right. Hand off to 35, David Day. Gets about one before he's brought down by the Arthur Roden defense. On that tackle, number 99, Jason Linz. Second and about eight and a half. Number 11 for Central, Sam Boomerod, another wide receiver, comes into the game uh, with the play for Nugent. They run their plays in and out with uh, they run their plays in and out with the with the wide receivers, and uh, that takes a little more time. But at least you're assured that the quarterback's going to get the right play. So. And they've got, they count on all three receivers to, to contribute to this offense. 
handoff to David Day over the left side. David Day brought down. It looks like he may have lost one yard. In on the tackle was number 43, uh, Mac Malach, Malach, and Jason Condon. So now it's third and uh, over 10, third and 11 at their own 50-yard line. So we'll have to look for the Titans to throw the ball now, Ian. Yeah, that's uh, a pretty fair guess, I think. And, and he's been throwing the ball uh, really well so far the game, so we can probably expect a, a pass here. Okay, so wide left is a boomerad, and wide right is Mike Sunderland. Scott Nugent up under the center. Early motion right. Nugent rolls out, gets a couple of blocks. Voting players are down. Throws over the middle to Mark Payne, number 81. He catches the ball for about an 18-yard gain, and that'll be a first down. So again, Central Elgin forced to throw the ball, but the line's giving Nugent enough time to throw it, and he'll pick out his receivers. As you can see there, when Nugent turned that upfield, there were two uh, Bowden linemen at his feet uh, trying to get a hold of whatever they could, and he just managed to slip through and then get that ball to Payne over the middle. So a gain of about 18. First down for Central Elgin at about... Voden's 42. I see the minute flags up now, so we're nearing the end of the first quarter. Early motion left. Fakes a handoff. Nugent rolls right. Throws a little dump pass to number 23, Joe Vanderwerf, and he's close. He's close to a first down. That was a, that was a really nice play. They had, they had um, most of the Voden defense rolling left. As, as the quarterback was rolling right, and then that short dump pass of about five or seven yards. Okay, in that play, what they'll have is they'll have the running backs leave in early motion left, fake a handoff to the last running back, and the left guard will come across and be the uh, sole blocker on a, a bootleg. So the quarterback fakes a run left, rolls right with one lineman blocking, and got sufficient time to get it to Vanderwerf on a, a, about a 10-yard square out to the right. So it's first and 10 again at about Arthur Voden's 32. Early motion right, handoff up the middle to Joe Vanderwerf. Breaks to the right, uh, avoids a tackle by number 33, Shane Moyes, and, and gets about five or six. That appears to be the end of the first quarter. The score at the end of the first quarter, Central Elgin seven, Arthur Voden no score. David Day. Hey, Bullet. Okay, so at the end of the first quarter, it's 7-0 Central Elgin, and, and it's, it's what we could have expected from these two teams. Central Elgin uh, going to the air for some offense, and Arthur Bowden uh, primarily on the ground. I don't recall that they threw the ball uh, yet, but I'm, I'm sure they'll, they'll get to that part of their game when they... Now, now they have the wind. That might make a difference. The wind's a little bit in their favor in the second quarter, so we can look for Arthur Bowden to maybe throw the ball a little more and take advantage of that. Yeah, the Central had a good mix with their uh, inside-outside runs and then uh, throwing a pass in once in a while. It seemed to kept, uh, keep Bowden off guard. Okay, so it's second and about five uh, can you, uh, from the 27-yard from the line. Scott Nugent audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. Hands it off up the middle to Joe Vanderwerf. Cuts it to the outside and brought down by number 12, Chris Campbell. That quick hitter with a fullback up the middle uh, seems to be an effective play for Central. If you, if you can get that quick hitter and, and then you get the defense to pinch, you can get outside. First yeah. down for Central Elgin. Sorry, Ian. Yeah, and, and they seem to be getting the blocks, too. The, uh, the voting line looks uh, quite large, but they uh, seem to be getting the, the, the key blocks they need to, uh, to open the holes. Yeah, that offensive line for Central Elgin uh, working off a lot on that the timing blocks, uh, the trap blocks and the counter blocks uh, to spring those running backs through. If they can get them through the line and into the linebackers, they feel they're pretty confident they can get some yards. Scott Nugent fakes bootleg right again, turns it upfield, runs it, and it looks like he gets about maybe one. So again, he had plenty of time. The receivers were covered well by the Arthur Bowden deep backs, and, he, and Nugent had elected to run it. So he gets about one. So it's second and nine for Central Elgin. You can only do so much as a quarterback. You can't, uh, you can't make somebody catch the ball, and, and you can't uh, uh, get them open. You can just wait till they get open and throw the ball, and that was excellent coverage by the Voden deep backs. So we're looking at second and nine for Central Elgin. A boomerad left, Jacoby right. 
Mark Payne, the tight end, goes to the left side. In the backfield are Vanderwerf and Hamsey. Right slot back is David Day. Nugent Audible Isaac, motion right. Looks like a quick screen out 35, David Day. Excuse me, that's not a screen. There was no lineman. That's just a quick out pass into the flat. And we'll have to wait and see what they got on that play. It's down in the corner, and we couldn't really tell how far they got. But it is third down, and they only got a couple. So it looks like it's about third and seven for Central Elgin. Scott Nugent, uh, the quarterback, telling the referee that the coaching staff wanted a timeout for Central Elgin. So uh, Bill Emery and Bill Lindsay are looking over their, their playbook, trying to pick out a play uh, that they feel will work in this situation. Again, it was about this time at the other end of the field with the central drive that they uh, wound up fumbling it about this part of the field that, that uh, hurt them. If they can punch this in again, as I said earlier, it'll make a big difference in this game here. The wind seems to be picking up uh, a little bit here, Wade, in the, in the second quarter. I don't know if this is going to affect... Uh, the passing game if, if, if this wind uh, continues well the wind seems to be coming at us from the south and maybe a little bit from the west so if uh, central is going to throw against the wind they're going to throw left if they throw a little bit with it they'll be throwing to the right so we'll see if they elect to throw it and which side they throw it to the ball's in the right hash mark so if they want the wide field they'll have to roll out left if they do come to the right they're playing with a short field which is a little easier for a defensive back to cover a wide receiver Central breaks the huddle. Mike Sunderland in 88 goes wide left, and a boomerot is right. Mark Payne, the tight end right side, and in the backfield, Vanderwerf and David Day. 33 Hamsies, a left slot. Third and seven. Flags down on the play. It'll be offside or illegal motion on one of these teams. This is going to be a big play if it's against Bowden it's third and about two if it's against Central it'll be third and about 12. 55 white that's oh, Arthur Bowden. Bowden and that's uh, Wade Graves so it'll be third and about two third and a long two so early in the second quarter here a uh, key play on, on a drive by Central Elgin John Jacoby runs in with a play relays to Scott Nugent They're at about the 12-yard line of Arthur Voden. They come up with Payne right tight end and uh, David, uh, David Day and Joe Vanderwerf in the backfield. Hamsey's the left slot. Comes in motion, counterplay number 35. Day breaks open to a hole, puts his head down, and he's down right near the goal line. Looks like it's about the two. That counterplay so, seems to be uh, really effective for, uh, for Central. Well, it's that counterplay where the, the backs, we talked about that earlier, where the backs will leave early. And the quarterback starts a rollout, and they come back with a counter. And if you get a linebacker to take a step or two, that gives the offensive line a great angle to block. And, and David Day runs for about 10. So right down the goal line, first and goal from, as we see from the sticks, it's about the two or three. So you can't be guaranteed that Central Elgin will run it, even though with three or four plays at the goal line, chances are pretty good you'll be able to punch one in. But... If they can get the defense to pinch in and roll out and hit a wide receiver. Oh, Tony Millis throws a flag. I think it's a, it's a, a time violation. Time count violation against Central Logan. So that hurts. I mean, you had first and, first and goal at the three. Now you're first and goal back at the, uh, back at the 80. Yeah, as I say, the, uh, the pass here will probably be... Uh, I think we could probably expect to pass either this, uh, this down or, or possibly next. They, they don't seem to be having too much trouble with that, with getting through the uh, Bowden secondary with that pass. Okay, tight end right, wide receivers left and right, and a slot back left. Early motion, fake up the middle, looks like an option play. Pitch out to number 33, Mike Hamsey, puts his nose down, and he scores on the option right. That'd be a 58 option right. Scott Nugent faked up the middle sprinted out right and pitches out to Mike Hamsey number 33 and uh, he bared down and, and got the needed yard at the goal line well run option excellently executed that uh, 
uh, when the ball's wet like that, that option play, just like your passing game, you can't be guaranteed that it's going to be a real successful play. And that pitch seemed to be a little high. Ian and Mike Hamsey reached up over his head to grab that ball. So, uh, yeah, he did well to hang on to that one. And yeah, they, they, the vote in secondary was, was staying back because of that uh, threat of the path, and they only had, uh, I guess, two, two attackers on that. Okay, on the convert, David Lepischek, uh makes it 14 nothing Central Elgin. Holding the ball is the wide receiver number 88, Mike Hams, or uh, excuse me, Mike Sunderland. Uh, that's a tough job also when it's it's wet and muddy and, and cold on the field today. So you rely on your hands, guys, to to hang on to the ball there, and he did a good job. Also tough snapping the ball, so uh, it's it's a challenge to get a convert on a day like today. So we're about the middle of the second quarter here. Central Elgin takes a 14 nothing lead. And Arthur Bowden's going to get the ball for the first time here in the second quarter with the win. So we'll see if they elect to, to throw the ball or stay on the ground and, uh, and bust some long plays. They have the potential to bust long plays. As I said, Kohler had a couple up the middle that he just barely got caught on. And one was pulled back by a penalty, another one by a, a shoestring tackle. So, I mean, they're not out of this game. This is, this is far from over. It's just 14, and Arthur Bowden can do that on, on two quick series with the ball. So, Yeah, they certainly start, they certainly shown us that they uh, can break those uh, runs when they want to. They've got a, a, a very big offensive line and uh, one big running back and one real quick running back. So you can't uh, you can't necessarily always guess where they're going to go. David Lepischek to kick off. Kicks it along the ground. Picked up by number 66, Con, and he breaks up the middle. And a tackle at about their own 45. By number 54, T.J. Savage. Fairly aggressive tackle around the head. It was it was pretty high, but I don't know if he got the head. But the referees didn't throw a flag, so okay. First and ten for Arthur Voden here in the middle of the second quarter, at their own 46. It was a tight game in, in the uh, junior championship with. Uh, Parkside prevailing 13-12 uh, in a tough competition between the Oxford and Elgin rivals. We expect nothing but another tight game here today. So Arthur Voden up the middle to, I believe it's Kohler. Looks like he got about five right up the middle. A tough way to make five, but uh, he carried about four or five of the central defensive lineman he won't be brought down very easy he's uh, uh, very quick very powerful and he'll he'll go through you as well as around you and if, if he can go through you, he'll do that and if he can get around and bust it for a long one he'll be tough to bring to bring down okay they've gone to a two wide receiver right set and a two running backs in the backfield so maybe they're bringing a pass here Ian Fake handoff to number 33, number 19 rolls out, and he's hit as, he, as he's throwing the ball, and that's a fumble. No, Tony waved it down. His arm was going forward. His arm was going forward, Tony, Tony said, so it'll, be, so it'll be third down in about five. So there's a tough play. That could have been another turning point. As Central felt that they got to him in time, and the, the referee, Tony Millis, said that his arm was going forward, so it's an incomplete pass. So we're back to second, excuse me, third down and five. Yeah, the first pass, they've shown us uh, Central's fairly effective in getting through that off, uh, offensive line and getting to the quarterback. Well, that time, I believe it was uh, number 89, Derek Dennis, who came around the right end. The quarterback had plenty of time to get that ball off, and I think they only had two receivers downfield. So anyway, it's a sweep left to Lucas. There's a... Fumble. There's a fumble, and Central Elgin's falling on it. Number 89, Derek Dennis, who, who uh, hit the quarterback as he was passing in the last play and picks up uh, a fumble on this play. So two key plays by the Central Elgin defense, who, who the first time these teams met had a tough time stopping Arthur Voden in the second half. So uh, Central Elgin has turned it up a notch on defense here. So again, Central Elgin's got the ball starting at about the 48 of Arthur Voden. They're getting some tough breaks, but it looks severe. They can't seem to uh, make things click. Well, on that play, it looked like the running back uh, takes uh, another step, and he's got a first down. That'll be, that's a big play, but the central Logan just got a hold of his arm, just got enough of the ball to, to strip it loose. And uh, Derek Dennis, opportunistic, fell on it. Jacoby wide right, Sunderland wide left, motion left. 
Nugent throws it to Sunderland. Oh, and it was incomplete. It looked like he was going to be picked off by the other voting deep back. Number 16, Scott, Scott Patton, it looks like, was back there, as well as number 12, Chris Campbell. Dave Surgeon was also back there on cover. So that was a play where Central Elgin was looking to uh, take the emotion of the game and turn that into a quick score with a, with a, a quick, deep pattern. Okay, quarterback dropped back, took a two- or three-step drop and threw it early uh, to the wide receiver left, and, and a couple of DBs there were in great position to knock it down for Arthur Bowden. So it's second down, second and 10 for Central Elgin at the 48. Slot back David Day wide right. Hand off right up the middle to, to Vanderwerf. Great blocks. He cut it, cuts it to the outside. And number 40, Surgeon, is there to make the, the tackle. That was a touchdown saving tackle. An excellent hole by the offensive line uh, to spring Joe Vanderwerf right up the middle. He cut it to the outside. And he got about uh, he got about 20 on that play. So it's first first and 10 for Central Elgin. So first down, number 11, uh, Boomerad right, and can't see who's left. It looks like Jacoby. Hand off to David Day up the middle. And that seemed to be a quick whistle. I'm not sure. The David, David Day went left, and the Arthur Bowden lineman came in and got a hold of him, spun him around. And David Day took off to the right side, and they blew the play down. So after a loss, after a loss of about seven or eight, not a popular call on the sidelines of Central after David Day seemed to have, have broken out of that, but regardless of that, the referee blew the whistle, and when he blows the whistle, the play's down, he's got to stick with it. So. We're looking at second and 18 now. Second and 18 or second and 17 for Central Elgin. And uh, they come out in a two back set. Early motion right, quarterback rolls out. Again, Nugent steps up, throws it deep to Mark Payne over the, in the end zone and he, incomplete in the end zone. So again, Central Elgin's going on first sound there, Ian. They, they come up to the line. You can see when the running backs take off and the quarterback was underneath the center, that uh, it's going to be uh, on first sound. And they just, the, the running backs take off, and as soon as the quarterback says the first word or first sound, center snaps the ball, and they get kind of a, a bit of a head start on their, on their blocking schemes because Central Elgin rolls out to throw. Yeah, Nugent uh, showed some great, great experience there. But the, the patience he, uh, he just exhibited in, in throwing that pass and staying in the pocket and uh, getting that long pass was uh, really nice. He, he rolled out to the right on that, and again, like we saw earlier in, in the game on the, in the first quarter, he stepped up between two Arthur Bowden players and threw the ball to the end zone. Uh, so he kept his, he kept his head, head about him and uh, stayed patient, wait, waited for the blocks to set up, stepped up and threw the ball. He took a hit after that, but he got right up, and he's all right. He's on the sideline talking to the coaches about the next play. We have an Arthur Bowden player down on the field. I can't see the number. It looks like number 55, and that will be Wade Graves, but... I can't tell. It looks like the coaches are looking at his right knee. Yeah, it is number 55, Graves. So he's getting up, which is a good sign, flexing it. So it appears to be uh, not too serious, which is good news. You don't want uh, any injuries to decide this game or, or have anybody hurt at all in, in, a, in a final game like this. You want to see both teams bring in their best and, and right to the end. So he's being helped off by the coaches and uh, we'll have to wait and see if he can come back to play the rest of the game. Okay, so the set here after the uh, loss of about seven and then the incomplete pass is third and 17 for Central Elgin. Wide right is Mike Sunderland and uh, Sam Boomerod wide left. Mark Payne, the tight end left. Slot back right, early motion right. And they're rolling out to the right again. Nugent throws over the middle to, oh, to Mark Payne. 
and that ball was tipped just as he was going to catch it and he couldn't quite hang on to it so it's going to be fourth and 17 and I could just hear uh, Bill Lindsay call for the punt team so we don't expect any trick things right here fourth and 17 is not a time to run a trick play maybe fourth and you know inside three or four you might be able to get rid of something here but if they can get a decent punt and trap the other voting team down at their goal line uh, that's an awful long way to go to uh, to get a score for Arthur Voden. Mark Payne, the tight end, is also the punter. And the coaches at the Central Logan sideline are calling timeout. I believe they didn't feel they were going to get that playoff in time. And they do have two timeouts a half, and I don't think they've used one yet. I, I don't have the stats on that, but I don't know. And Lindsay's calling for the field goal right here. So I, I guess his thinking on this is if they can, Lep David Lepischek, the kickoff uh, convert field goal man, has, has got a good leg, and if he can get the ball up in the air and going, it's it's about uh, it's going to be about a 35 yarder, probably within his range. Uh, with the field condition, it makes it a little tougher, but I, I, I guess they would be figuring that if they don't get it, uh, it's going to have the same effect as a punt down near the goal line. I don't think you'll see a fake here, although this would be a good time. You get, you get the defense thinking uh, field goal. Ball's down. He kicks it. It's going to be short and takes it at the goal line. There's a, oh, there's a face mask. So that will hurt. The, the player is still down. Yeah, it looks like he's kind of... Oh, he's moving anyway. You, know, and he, you, you never like to see face, uh, face masking penalties. It, I don't know if that was... Uh, you never think they're intentional, but... Yeah, he's, he's well, I think down. in a situation like that, when the player's getting away from you and you're just reaching, you're just grabbing for whatever you can get. You see it... Uh, probably more than it should be in football, but I, I can't imagine any football player would try and do that. So it no. was, it was uh, he got it back to about the 10 and a, and a, a 15 yard penalty. So it looks like they're going to be at the 20, at the 25 yard line. And I believe the referee has thrown the player out for that face mask. I guess he, he felt that it was uh, either an intent to injure or uh, over aggressive or what have you, but I, th I think he's ejected the central logging player from the game. We don't have the number on that. That's really a bad way, as you say. Whenever that happens, it's not uh, it's not a, an intentional uh, grabbing of the face mask. It's just reaching out to uh, to try to bring the player down. He's up though, and he looks he, he looks like he's all right. Yeah, that's number 27, Brad Thompson. And that certainly is nice to see after after that that kind of a a play where you could see his head obviously turn at least 90 degrees and it's nice to see him up. He's rubbing it now, but hopefully he'll be all right. Neck injuries are nothing to fool around with. So I'm sure the coach will make sure he's, uh, he's fine to come back in if they do decide to let him back in the play. So first and 10 at their own 35 yard line for Arthur Voden. They come up with a wide receiver right and a wide receiver left. I formation in the backfield. Kohler in front of Lucas. Weaves audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. Gets the ball. Sweep left to Lucas. And he breaks a couple tackles and gets about two yards. Yeah, tough run for Lucas. He's uh, showing a lot of spunk on that run. He, should. he broke about three or four tackles for that. Yeah, he broke two or three to get to uh, back to the line of scrimmage and then broke another one to get a yard or two. So Arthur Voden's coming with a lightning series or a quick series, no huddle. Eye formation, hand off to the second back up the middle, Lucas, and a nice tackle by number 30 from Central Elgin, Mike Friends. Came in and... Uh, and got him right by the legs and brought him down. So it looks like he gained about five there. So we're looking at about third and third and about four. Third and three, excuse me. So it's third down, Arthur Voden. Again, I don't think they've thrown the ball yet, but uh, they may elect to here with uh, some time running out in the in the second quarter and uh, in their own end. I formation, receivers both right and left. That was. And that was a play right up the middle. And uh, they're still short of the first down. Looks like they're about a yard or two short. Bowden's trying to stick to their running game, but the looks of it, uh, 
you say maybe the uh, conditions of this field are, are uh, hampering their uh, success so far. Well, you've also got to do what uh, the best part of your game is, and if that's running, they, they've got to stick with it. I mean, it's still the second quarter. They're only down 14, so it's not like they have to open up and start throwing the ball over the field. So they still must have a lot of confidence in their running backs. As we mentioned, uh, a good pair of running backs that complement each other. Size up the middle with Kohler, size and speed. And Lucas, you know, maybe an off tackle around the end. He's quite quick. So fourth and one, they're going for it. Uh, full house backfield here. Hand off left side to Kohler. He looks like he's got it. He's right about first down distance. Looks like the ball's about a half, of, half a yard over the line. So I think you'll see first down here, Arthur Voden. Yes, first down. He's the man to give it to on a fourth and one. Well, sure, not very often you're going to hold him to under one or two yards. And if you only need one, give it to him. And, and uh, that's your bread and butter play. Uh, sure, yardage. So we get first down and 10 at about the, at 46 of Arthur Voden. Here in the second quarter of the Oxford Elgin Senior Football Championship between Central Elgin and Arthur Voden. At the moment, it's 14 0 Central Elgin. Full house backfield, slot, slot back right and wide receiver right. Quarterback drops back to pass, throws it over the middle and throws it over top of number 22, Chris Zerbicki. Yeah, he was rushed on that play again. Their uh, offensive line hasn't been giving him too much. Uh, setup time. Well on that they, they send out two wide receivers so there's, there's not a lot of cover guys and the Central Elgin cornerbacks are pinching in pretty well and uh, he got back through the ball probably before he wanted to and just over through the, the uh, wide receiver Zerbicki. So again they come out single slot right sweep to the right side with Lucas the outside cornerback Van Burkle is giving ground but did a nice job to contain the run and uh, they got him for a loss of about two. On that play, the cornerback is really in a tough position, Ian. He has to, he has to back off, which is uh, going against most football principles, and make sure the play gets turned up, up inside so the interior lineman can, get, can come in and make the play. If he lets that get outside, uh, Lucas might go for a long gain. Yeah, I think the central coaches will be happy with uh, the execution of that play of the, of the corner. He did an uh, excellent job there. He took, about, uh, he took a, a, a blocker and kept his outside shoulder uh, from being hit. If he gets his outside shoulder hit, he's turned in. He's got to take on the hit with his inside shoulder and keep the outside exposed. He did a great job, and the result is a loss of one. So it's third and 11 for Arthur Voden. Fakes to Kohler, screen pass to the left side to number 53. Coming in for the hit is uh, oh. Scott Helmer, number 32, and it's only a gain of about two yards. Actually Excellent play. Well executed, as you say. It was a shoestring tackle to bring him down. He had a, another 10 or 15 yards there if he, if he missed that tackle. Scott Helmer, number 32, is a defensive halfback for Central, and he did a great job to bring down uh, the much larger number 53 for Arthur Voden, uh, Mike McGugan. Uh, if he doesn't make the tackle, they might get another 8 or 10 yards. That would have been a first down. So a key tackle by Scott Helmer there, third and 11. So Arthur Voden in a punt punt formation here they put one guy wide right into punt is number is number sorry number 19 I thought it was 18 number eight number 19 and the ball takes a, a, a bounce a bounce for Arthur Vode Mike Sarland picks it up and just about is brought down as soon as he picked it up flags on the play I would think that they are uh, you mean no yards no penalties. Yards penalty. Yeah, it looks like it. I would think so. That was a nice play by Mike Sunderland to get away from that initial tackler. He gained about 15 more yards. Down on the sideline here, I see a couple of university football players that uh, went to Central Elgin. Craig White is right below us, and beside him is Kyle Walters. Craig White played uh, right tackle for York Yeoman in the, the OUAA West, and Kyle Walters played for Guelph Griffins. He had a great year. He hurt his knee right at the start and took three weeks off. He's a running back, and uh, probably most of you fans probably saw the game on TSN uh, against Toronto where he, he broke an 85-yarder in overtime uh, and then scored another one to win it for the Guelph Griffins. Uh, so his team lost on Saturday uh, in an attempt to go to the Vanier Cup, so nice to see them back watching their, their pals play. Handoff up the middle to Vanderwerf. Looks like he got about three for Central Elgin. Oh, 
Also along the sidelines are a number of uh, uh, Arthur Bowden graduates, Parkside graduates. This is a big day for, for Oxford Elgin football. A lot of people come back and, and uh, relive their old high school memories and remember the game that they won three, four, five years ago, what have you. On the sideline also, I see Andy Rickwood, Mark Calder, who uh, played at Mount Allison, Gordon McLeod, Tim Avis, Derek Parks, who went to Western and played there. Second and about six for Central Logan. Early motion right, hand off to David Day. He turns it upfield and gets a first down. Gets about seven, so on second and five or six, gets a first down. So they're now at the 49 of Arthur Voden. And I haven't had a signal from the referees yet that there's three minutes left, so there should be plenty of time for at least to finish this drive for Central. They don't have to panic just yet and start throwing the ball uh, too far. They can, they can take the five and six yard run and the short pass. They don't have to start airing it out. If they were to score here, it'd be 21 nothing, and that would be a, a, a large enough lead that uh, the coaches of Central Algon would obviously be happy with the first half here. Nugent again. Uh, up under the center, a boomerod right, and looks like Jacoby left. And they fake the handoffs. Nugent steps up, throws the ball to Mark Payne, and Mark Payne uh, goes down on his knees to catch that pass. That was a, that was a well-thrown ball by Scott Nugent. He uh, threw it where only Mark Payne could catch it. He threw it a little, a little behind him, a little down. As you can see, an uh, Arthur Bowden defensive halfback or linebacker almost got a hand on it. So. That was a good coordination between the tight end Payne and the quarterback Nugent to throw where only we could catch it. And Nugent again showed great, uh, great patience. There was Bowden uh, defensive players on either side of him just, just as he uh, went to throw that one, and he still got a, a really nice pass away. Okay, Jacoby on the right side, Sunderland on the left. Wide outs, Mark Payne the tight end to the right side. They're on the left hash mark, so if you do see a rollout, it'll probably come to the right side. And you see motion, and it's... Uh, Two guards are pulling. Oh, a nice tackle by number 32, Gary Pock. Good job containing there. That was his job, and he did a great job. He, he, the he, fended, back up. he fended off a tackle, or a blocker, excuse me, and uh, got a hand on David Day uh, where it looked like he was going to get uh, good yardage. So it's second and nine. Central Logan running with her lightning series. Motion left. Nugent rolls out. The running back's block, and it's a deep pass to Mike Sunderland. He turns, and the ball is a little short and hit the Arthur Voden defensive back number 25 Alex Spazic in the back so maybe a little farther on that one that's into the window Ian uh, going right into the teeth of the wind on that play nice throw by Nuge. Nugent just a little short Sam Boomrod runs a play in for Scott Nugent and this being uh, third and nine you can predict that it's going to go in the air. A boom right left and uh, Sunderland on the right side. Motion right. Nugent steps up, throws a short one to David Day. He catches it, but I believe he's short of the first down by about two yards. That looks like the end of the half. Wait. And that's the end of the half, so the score at halftime, Central Logan 14, Arthur Bowden nothing. We'll be back in a few minutes uh, to bring back the second half. Okay. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of the Oxford Elgin senior football final between Arthur Voden Vikings and Central Elgin Titans. Score at halftime is 14 Central. Arthur Voden, no score. Uh, in the first half, Central Elgin uh, ran the ball a little more than they passed. They ran it about 60% of the time and passed it about 40% of the time. Arthur Voden was mainly running. They probably about 80% run and 20% uh, pass. But uh, now that they're down in the second half, they may uh, decide to start throwing it a little more. But in the second half of a game like this, it really doesn't matter what plays you're going to call. It's, it's just do or die right now, isn't it? Yeah. The uh, stats in the second half, uh, you, can throw, you can throw them right out the window. It's, uh, Bowden's got uh, 14 points to come back, and uh, they've got to uh, get on it right away. It appears that Bowden will be kicking off. 
and uh, obviously Central will be receiving, and Voden has a wind, uh, whatever there is. It, it's died right now, but it tends to be going from the right side to the left side on our field, and Voden will have it in the third quarter, Central in the fourth, so um, Arthur Voden's going to have to stop the Central offense and get their offense going here to get back in this game. Uh, the first few minutes of the second half will be very important here to, as to set a, a, a tone for the second half of this game. Kicking off for Arthur Vold will be Tate Lincoln. And back to receive for Central Long will be number 88, Mike Sunderland, number 90, uh, John Jacoby. The backs are Hamzy, Payne, and David Day. Okay, Lincoln to kick, and he kicks it off for the second half down the left sideline to Mike Sunderland. Comes up and catches it. He's busting up the right-hand side at number 29, uh, Scott Fennell, and number 53, Mike McGugan in on the tackle. So Central Elgin will start about their own 41-yard line. Did you say, Wade, it's, uh, it's key here that... Uh, Bowden starts off pretty strong and uh, turns things around and gets, and gets possession of the ball. Right. It's going to be important for the central offense to maintain the ball. Their offensive line is going to have to do a good job early in the third quarter so uh, they can keep that lead and get a little bit of a drive going and kill the clock. It looks like we have a sub in for uh, Mike Smith, the left tackle. It looks like John Thornton, uh, number 68, is into the game. I think Smith is out with a sore back. We'll have to find out what's wrong with that. Up to middle, no, excuse me, fake up to middle, and Mike Hamsey around the right end, and he's got about 10 yards. We'll see the mark. It appears he's a little short, so Central Offense faked out this commentator up the middle with a good fake, and Hamsey came around the right end, good for about nine. He had big 66, uh, giving him all the uh, blocking he needed on that run. Number 66 is Jeff McIntyre, the left guard. 69, Jeff Toogood is the right tackle Mike Casimir the center and uh, John Thornton the the left tackle number 61 is Jason Canna is the right guard now so they made a switch Canna was same play looks like it's coming back this way Hamsey breaks the tackle excuse me that was a first down for Central Logan so he gets about Seems to be about seven yards on that play. That looked like the same play they had just run the play before there, Ian. Yeah, yeah, it was. He, uh, he cut it up nicely, though. He, there, was, there was nothing on the outside, and he turned it back up, and he say, broke a, a key tackle there. He broke a tackle. It seemed to be about a yard before the line of scrimmage, so if that player could have held on to him, it would have been a loss of one. He broke through that and gained about six, so it's second and about four for Central Elgin. Wide right is Sunderland, and a wide left is a boomerod. Mark Payne, the tight end, is on the right side. Down and three it appears to be offside on the it appears to be offside on the uh, Arthur Voden uh, left defensive end he seemed to have lined up offside now whether that was uh, the central back and off because of the flags or not uh, Voden's uh, they did two or three big men right in on uh, Nugent on that play yeah they seem to break down the uh, the blocking of the central Logan offensive line of running back core and yes, it was offside, illegal uh, lineup. They're over the line of scrimmage. And so it'll be first and 10 for Central Elgin at the Arthur Voden 47. If Central can drive down the field and, and score a touchdown on this possession and take some time off the clock, it's going to put Arthur Voden in a bad situation being down three touchdowns and not wanting to run, not wanting to throw the ball. Excuse me. Jacoby wide right, center and left. Payne, the tight end, sets left. First down, Nugent up the middle to Vanderwerf. He breaks a hole. Big he's hole, got some blockers. Hole. He busted to the outside. And he's still going. He's down about the 20. No flags on the play. So an excellent hole by the uh, Central Logan offense to bust Vanderwerf through the middle. And then he got some secondary blocks downfield with the wide receiver. So uh, 
On that play, there was blocking right down the field. He gained about 20, so it'll be first down for Central again. Yeah, voden has got to uh, hold tough here. Stop Central's drive. It's key. They're going to have to stop him here because if they get down by too much, they're going to have to go to a game that, that they don't like to do. Okay, they like to run the ball, stay out front, and, and ball control. Central Elgin blocks a pass out here to the left side to David Day. Turns up field, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 10. I'm sorry. So there's just a quick hitch pass to the uh, running back coming out of the backfield. It's another first down signaled by the referee, Tony Millis. Mike Sonner, the number 88, is uh, telling Nugent the play that Coach Emery wants. And uh, a good position again. They're at the 10-yard line, so it looks like they can get a first down by about an inch, but it's basically first and goal at the 10 for Central Elgin. It's a counter play running to the right side. Mike Hamsey looks like he's lost about three. Yeah, the voting defense uh, closed that, that hole up pretty well. That was the play they started the drive with, and they got uh, about 10, and then they got about seven. So uh, maybe Arthur Voden figured that play out. They noticed the motion, and they uh, set up well for that one. So they're going to have to stop here. They put him back. It's third and about 13 at the 13-yard line. Central Elgin now driving uh, early in the third quarter of the Oxford Elgin final. Can we expect the pass here, Wade? Well, you're going to have to throw it at some point in time to get 13 yards. I mean, they can run it. Nugent pitches it out to number 35, David Day. He's trying to get outside. Kohler's chasing him. He looks like he got about two back to the original line of scrimmage. So there's the speed I was talking about, Randy Kohler. He's a, he's a load, but he can also move it out there and catch a, a quick running back like David Day. He certainly can. He sure, sure is a workhorse for that, that Voden uh, defense and offense. He's playing a real good game, getting yards when they want, and uh, playing great defense here for Voden. So it's third and 11 at about the eleven. If Kohler didn't make that tackle, he may have gained five or six more. So, and if he if he breaks one tackle, he may have scored. So that was a very key play to keep them in a passing situation for Central Elgin. So motion right, quarterback drops back. He rolls out right. Nice blocking, and they're throwing it to Mark Payne in the end zone, and he catches it for a touchdown. Mark Payne Excellent. catches a touchdown, and Central Elgin takes a 20 to nothing lead early in the third quarter here against the Arthur Voden Vikings. Passing offense of uh, Central seems to be uh, tough for, for Voden to handle. They have a system where they send out about four receivers out into the pattern, and if, if you're, you're going to have to pick up a receiver or a running back with a linebacker, and uh, the quarterback, Scott Nugent, is just looking for the coverage where he thinks he's got an advantage, be it uh, height or speed or whatever, and he picks out the guys that are either left open or have a, a mismatch. So yep. in that one, he picked out Mark Payne, he caught the ball, and it's now, and the convert's good by David Lepischek. It's 21 nothing for, our, for Central Elgin, excuse me, in the third quarter here. Yeah, and uh, Scott Nugent seems to, do, seems to be doing a uh, pretty good job, you say, is picking out the, uh, the guy most open. He's uh, sitting back in the pocket uh, like a veteran. And he's, he's, he's throwing the ball really well. It seemed on that play when it was third and 11 at the 11 yard line that the Arthur Voden team dropped back more players than they have in the past earlier in the game because they only had one rusher around the end and, and the two running backs picked him up very well and gave uh, Scott Nugent a little more time to throw the ball than he may have had if they had to rush three or four around the end. So uh, if you drop people back, you give the quarterback more time. If, if you hurry him, you don't drop as many back. So they're in a tough situation uh, when Central's is throwing the ball. But that was third and 11. And that was a key play uh, for Central Elgin. And uh, they came out with a touchdown, 21 nothing. David Lepischek to kick off. He kicks a line drive down the left side. It lands, is picked up by number 27. He's up the middle. And he's bust breaking tackles. And he's almost to midfield before he's brought down by Hamsey. And number 29, Jason Olver. So that was a, a great uh, run back for Arthur Voden, right up the middle, some key blocking to spring him through the middle, and if he could have broken one or two more tackles, he could have gone all the way. So 
that gives them great field position when they do need to start some offense going here. Yeah, they need to get uh, a few of those type of uh, plays going here. Okay, Central Elgin got the ball in the uh, start of the third quarter and drove it down the field, scored a touchdown. So Arthur Voden, this is the first time they've had the ball in the second half. They come out in the same set, wishbone formation, hand off to Lucas over the right side, and he gets about seven. Nice run off tackle right. Dave Van Burkle on the tackle. He's the left cornerback. He had a, a good first half. Both cornerbacks did. Derek Dennis uh, almost sacked the quarterback and then picked up a fumble. And Dave Van Burkle turned in a sweep where there were three blockers taking him on and uh, contained him to only two yards when it was third and about ten. So the cornerbacks for Central Logan are playing very well. The quarterback fumbles it on the snap and falls on it and maybe loses one. So it'll be third and about four. Excuse me, third and five. Not what Voden needs right now. No, when they made that first run of about six, they needed to get another, you know, three or four or five and keep this drive going. So third and five, it'll be interesting to see if they elect to go to the air or stay on the ground. Arthur Voden comes up. They again have a, uh, well, they go to a double wide receiver right, number 30, Lucas, and number 67, Mike Steele. Quarterback back to pass, throws it, wide receivers open on the right side, and he catches it, Lucas, for a first down. There we got their pass and play, uh, passing offense going now. So there they, they set out two wide receivers to the right and dropped back and threw it. Now they only put two wide receivers out, so they're uh, going to give their quarterback a lot of protection. That was a, a good pass and a good catch. The, the ball was up to the outside where only the receiver could catch it. If he misses it, it goes out of bounds. And it was a good pattern by the wide receiver because he got about 10 and came back to about 8 and caught the ball in first down distance. You can't catch the ball and then try and get first down. We back to pass again. Throws to the left, to the right side. And the ball was overthrown and uh, David Lepischek hit the, hit the receiver after the ball was just tipped over his hands and I believe there's a penalty for a late hit. That's uh, a little questionable call, but uh, looks like it was, looks like it's what it's going to be. Well, the, the referees are discussing whether or not the receiver could have caught it, and from here it seemed like the ball was well over his head. They call pass interference on that, uh, and uh, uh, that's a break for Arthur Voden. But and here we go. They have a double wide receiver right again. Two running backs in the backfield. So it appears that they're coming out throwing a little more. They're not even, they're not faking at all. And uh, that's a gain of about seven for uh, Arthur Voden. So Arthur Voden's decided, Ian, it looks like that they're going to have to throw the ball. They've gone to a two wide receiver set on the right side for the last four or five plays, completed a couple, uh, got a pass interference called, and then completed another. So they're starting to move the ball in the air, which is. Uh, uh, not the norm for Arthur Voden's senior team. They like to run the ball, but being behind, they're going to come out, and it's a challenge for them, and they're accepting it and throwing the ball. They're back to a one wide receiver left side, number 67, uh, Mike Steele, and in the backfield. Pitch out to Lucas. Pitch out to Lucas, full house backfield coming outside. He's trying to get outside, and number 24 makes the tackle for Central Elgin, David Lepischek. So it appears to be a first down for Arthur Voden. And they're starting to mix up the pass and run game. They're uh, passing it three or four times in a row, setting you up, backing you off, and then running the ball around the end with Lucas. So Yeah, as, as Central did in the first half, they have uh, they were mixing up the, uh, the run and the pass game, and uh, it, seems to work, it seems to be working now for Voden as well. OK, so it's first and 10 for Arthur Voden on the Central Logan 29-yard line. Uh, full house backfield, pretty tight formation here again. Slot back right, tight end left and right. And they hand it off to Cole right up the middle. And he busts one through. There we go. Coming over to make the tackles, number 31. And he's in for the touchdown. Great run. Great so run. they're in for a touchdown uh, on about a 29-yard run by Colder. And, and there we talked about him all game long, about his speed and size. And he broke two tackles. And carried that last line. one for the last five yards, yeah. Excellent run by Randy. Yeah, he broke tackles at the, at the line of scrimmage and then carried the last guy in for five or six yards. So he's very powerful and very quick. And, and Arthur Bowden's on the scoreboard here in, in the middle of the third quarter. And the score is 21-6 with a convert coming up. 
Point after. Tate Lincoln in for the, the convert. Good snap, the ball's down, it's up, and it appears to be good. So it's 21-7 for Central Elgin here in the third quarter of the Oxford Elgin senior football game. That's what Bowden needed uh, to uh, get themselves a the scoreboard early in the uh, third quarter. So it's not too early in the third quarter, but uh, at least they're on there now anyway. Yeah, they need to get on the scoreboard, get some confidence in their offense, and they, they did it with the pass. They uh, ran the ball for the touchdown, but they, they spread out the defense with the pass, uh, completed a few passes, and moved the ball. So, Arthur Voden, uh, emotions up on the sideline, they feel like they're back in this game. It's 21-7, so starting to tighten up here. May see a little more variety in their offense now in the, uh, the balance of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. As you can see, the, uh, their, pass, their passing game seems to be uh, clicking now for them. Yes, it is. So Central Elgin's going to have to uh, turn this game around again. Not that they're they're losing control, but 21-7 uh, and voting on a, on a roll here. What's the uh, confusion down here, Wade? Well, I don't know. Maybe the players or the uh, fans are too far on the sideline, and the ref is asking them oh, we're looking for to a get off the field. And, and yeah, their tee's coming in now. So Central Elgin's got to uh, get things going here on offense. Uh, with a 14-point lead, they don't want to, you know, go three and out with the ball. They want to get a drive going, kill some time on the clock, get through the third quarter, get the wind in the fourth quarter, and then start attacking again. So even though they threw the ball well in the third quarter here uh, into the wind, they want to uh, ball control, work the clock, and keep the ball away from the Arthur Voden offense. Kickoff by number 21, it, Mike Sunderland catches it. At about his own 20-yard line, he comes upfield, a couple nice blocks, cuts it outside, goes in the sideline, and is tackled in uh, tackled in the infield. He gets out to about the 40-yard line, though. Good run. And he comes up with a pile of mud. He's now got a black, gold, and brown uniform going for him right on the Arthur Voden bench. So it's first down Central Elgin at about their 40. We'll see where the ball's spotted. The Voden team team seems to be uh, getting charged up. We'll uh, see if the uh, momentum is going to start to change here. We'll have to see if Central Elgin can stem the tide here. They have to uh, turn this game around a little bit. Voden made a nice drive. They've got to come back and respond with the same effort. So Centerlin is wide left. Jacoby's right. Nugent's still in at quarterback for Central Elgin. Nugent's audibleizing on the line of scrimmage. Motion left. Up the middle to Vanderwerf. And he looks like he got about five and there's a flag down it appears to be against Arthur Voden on the tackle we'll have to wait and see what it is it appears that Vanderwerf almost lost that ball in the handoff number 99 for Arthur Voden a face mask Jason Linz so that's a big break for Central Elgin they got about five on that play and they'll get about they'll get 15 so they're at they're at Arthur Voden 50 yard line so a big turn right there when Central Elgin has to establish itself again in offense so Central Elgin at Arthur Voden 50 on, a, on another drive here. Um, good, good, good position to be with the ball. They're right in front of us, so we'll be able to see the exact yardages here. Boomerad, a boomerad right and Jacoby left. Hand off to David Day around the left end. Gets by the line of scrimmage, busts it for about five, gets 10, gets about 13 before he's finally brought down by the Arthur Voden defenders. Nice run by David Day to cut it up inside the offensive line block, make a nice cut on a tricky field to gain about 15 and a first down for Central Elgin. Yeah, great run. He, he really picked those holes, holes well. He, uh, just, he changed directions two or three times there. Nice blocking by the offensive line. And I, if I'm correct, the uh, left tackle is John Thornton still uh, with... Mike Smith being out. No, excuse me, I'm correct here. Uh, Mike Smith is back at right guard, so uh, Jason Cannon is now the left tackle. Nugent fakes, just avoids a tackle, throws to the right flat to Mark Payne, and just about brings it down, but it's incomplete. So Nugent just avoids uh, about a, a five or eight yard loss, which is uh, a lucky for the Titans that are still only second and ten, and just about completed a pass. So throwing into the wind it doesn't seem to bother Central Elgin they've rolled out left and thrown it and rolled out right and thrown it and, and they're throwing it into the wind here 
So we've got to be nearing the end of the third quarter, and it's 21-7 Central Elgin. Sunderland wide left and Jacoby wide right, second and 10 at the 38 yard line. Motion left, fake up the middle, give to Hamsey around the right end. He's following Jeff McIntyre, his block, cuts it upfield behind McIntyre after a nice block by Jeff and appears to have got about 10. And that central blocking uh, on the running game seems to be the, uh, the, the key for Central. They made a nice job there. Central Logan's coming back with our lightning offense. They've got to wait now to the chains get moved, so it was a first down. Nuge audibleizing, getting his team ready. Referee blows the play in, and Nugent's, Nugent's ready to go. Fake. Fake to Nugent. And he's sacked. So that seemed to be a little slow setting up that play, and Nugent gets sacked for a loss of about 10. So it'll be second and, second and 20 for Central Elgin. So after a first down like that, uh, that's tough to do on a, on a play. You, you'd, uh, you'd like to get at least to the line of scrimmage. You don't want to lose anything. Uh, but the thinking by the Central Elgin coaches is, well, let's hurry this up, get the Arthur Bowden defense while they're, they're back on their heels maybe, and uh, see if we can zip one in the end zone quickly on them. So we're looking at second and about 20 for S Central Elgin. Mark Payne, the tight end right, double wide receivers. Running backs go right side. Nugent just drops back. A draw play to Vanderwerf. Cuts it over the, to the right a bit and gains about three. So it'll be third and about 17. Nicely, nicely uh, executed play, Wade. The uh, Bowden defense seems to be uh, holding tough on the inside game now anyway. Well, yeah, they, they, uh, you're obviously expecting a pass from Central Ugg in second and 20, and Central probably tried to counter that with a, with a draw, thinking that everybody else would expect a pass. And... It, it seemed to be set up pretty well, but Voden closed the gap real quick and made a nice play on that. So we're setting up for third and 17 now from Central. You can expect a pass here, third and uh, 17. They're on the right hash mark, so they may roll out left, early motion. Quarterback gets the ball, and the running backs go out to block, and they throw it out to Mike Hamsey, and it's incomplete. So we're looking at fourth and 17. Well, well thrown pass. Uh Tough, tough catch by uh, 33. Mike Hamsey. Mike Hamsey. It was a tough one to catch. It was over the shoulder, into the wind. May have uh, moved to the last minute, but regardless, it's incomplete. And Mark Payne, the tight end, number 81, is in to punt for Central Elgin. So there was a nice drive. They went from about their 40 down to Arthur Voden's 30, and they got a first down and then uh, lost 10 and, and uh, didn't seem to keep things going. So we're looking at fourth and 17, Payne back to punt. The return men uh, for Arthur Voden, Dave Surgent, number 40, and number 29, Scott Fennell. And it's a fake by David Day, and he, he appears to be close to the first down. And they didn't get it, but at fourth and 17, there's maybe a time you can try it if, if you, that's a long way to go, but if you spring it, it it's a real, uh, an uplift for your team. And if you don't get it, you're still well in their territory. So kind of an educated gamble by the central coaches. That certainly was a surprise play as they just say everybody was the uh, ex definitely expecting that punt. Yeah, fourth and 17 you don't expect too much especially when you're winning 21-7 but they just about got it. They seem to come up about a yard or two short so uh, a punt probably would have got them to about the same point so it turned out all right for the Central Elgin Titans and Arthur Bowden's got the ball back at their own 21st and 10. Over the right side to Lucas, he gains about two. A little bit of a mix up there uh, with the Arthur Voden offense. They had a player run off real late, Dave Surgent. He ran off real late and uh, just got out of bounds in time. So uh, second and seven, it appears, for Arthur Voden. Number 27, Brad Thompson goes wide left, full house backfield. Up the middle to Kohler. It looks like he's got about two or three. Stacked up well by the Titan defense. And up up the middle to Randy Kohler. I don't know if Randy's uh, 
conserving his energy there if he's starting to uh, feel the effect of, of, of going both ways for three quarters. Well, he certainly does. Uh, he's a workhorse being a fullback or running back for Arthur Bowden and, and a linebacker. Those are two of the most demanding positions on a football team, and he's doing them both. Done them very well all season, and I'm, I'm quite certain that he's not going to give up now. You can see the scoreboard, and they're not that far out, so he's, given a, he's giving everything he's got. So we're looking at third and three for Arthur Bowden. Motion the back for right up the middle to Kohler. It seems, no, it's not Kohler. Sorry. It was to the other running back, and it seems that he's short. So it's fourth and about two or three. They must not have gained much. They've got to get right to the 30-yard line. So you can tell at home whether they uh, will get it when they when the players tackle. You can see the 30-yard line. They've got about two or three to get two or three to get here. So and that's a tough decision for Coach Williamson being still the third quarter and only down two scores, but he's elected to go for it. So you can maybe predict that Kohler will get the ball here. Yeah, I think so. It's a pitch out to Lucas around the right end. He's got a corner, and it appears to have the first down. Kohler provided yeah. the, the key block there. Yeah, excellent run. Yeah, what you're doing there is you're taking your, your large running back and blocking and your small running back that's fast and giving him the outside, where maybe the Central Elgin team figured they'd be coming right out the middle. So not really a trick play, but uh, an educated play. Gamble, but they had to go for it, as you say. Sure. It's, it's not uh, real late in the game, but you don't want to give the ball back to Central Logan offense too many times. So we're first and 10. He got it by about two yards, so they're on the 32. First and 10 for Arthur Voden. Double wide receiver right. Two running backs in the backfield. This is the set they will pass out of. Again, no play action at all. Quarterback drops back. He throws it long. Number 31's there for the interception for Central Elgin by number 31, Brandon McVicker. So a play there where if man-to-man uh, -man coverage, if that quarterback could have got the ball a little farther or even the, the defensive back slips, we're looking at a, a real tight game here. One score away, so. Boy, that was a tough, tough break for, uh, for Voden. Key, that was key, key play by Central. That was tough. That was an excellent play by number 31. He he watched the defense. He watched the wide receiver downfield, and when it got to a point that the ball was thrown, the receiver looked back. He looked back, adjusted to the ball, and made the catch. So, right in front of the the receiver. So an excellent defensive play by Brandon McVicker. So Central Elgin takes over at their own 42-yard line, first and ten. Motion left up the middle of Vanderwerf. He gets through, gets gets about two yards, two or three yards. It'll be second and about seven. And a late flag comes down. We'll have to wait and see what it is. Tony Mill is the referee asking his uh, line judges and back judges what the, the flag is. It appears to be against Bowden. They're marching it off. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Arthur Bowden. So they gain... Uh, 10 yards on that, so it'll be first and 10. Central Elgin at uh, their own 53, so about midfield. Central Elgin's had good ball, uh, good position on the field to start every drive. They've been at the 40 or 50 every time, and that's going to help your offense. They don't have as far to go. First down and 10, Central Elgin at midfield. Two back set for Central Elgin. Nugent. Uh, left off tackle. David Day. David Day looks like he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So uh, it'll be second in about 10. He may have gained half a yard. Yeah, little penalties like that will uh, kill you. You, you got to really uh, clamp down to make sure you don't get those five and 10 yard penalties. Yeah, it certainly does when you stop a, a team with only two yards on the ground and, and make them go to the air or make them go to something else that they don't want to do at this time of the game. It's a good time. It's a good play for the defense, and then you give up a penalty like that and give them another first down and 10 free yards. So I see the minute flags up, Ian, so we're right at the end of the third quarter here. And Central Elgin will have the win in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, excuse me. So they're looking to get a nice long drive here, score a major touchdown, and extend this lead to 21 points. Nugent handoff to Hams. He goes around the right end. He splits his two guards. He's got quite a, quite a lead there. He's going around the right end. He's being chased. And he was finally brought down about the 35-yard line by number 40, uh, excuse me, uh, Dave Surgent. So excellent line blocking by the offense again. 
that was uh, both guards pulling around the end, one kicking out and one turning up field. And they both made excellent blocks and a good run by Hamzy to turn it up between those two guards. They've had a lot of, su a lot of uh, success with that, with that uh, play, Wade. Yeah, well, they set that up. I mean, Vanderwerf's had a good day up the middle, too. Uh, the fullback right up the middle. And then when the linebackers come in, you fake to the fullback. You, you get the off tackle uh, hole to work. So we'll have to see what Central comes now. It's first and 10 on uh, Arthur Voden's 36. Same play that way, and it's stacked up for a loss of about five. That looked like the same play to the left side to David Day, and uh, the Arthur Voden lineman came through and got him before he could really get going on that one. That appears to be the end of the third quarter. So at the end of three quarters, it's Central Elgin Seniors, the 21, and Arthur Voden Seniors, seven here in the final of, of the Oxford Elgin Conference football at Emsley Field in St. Thomas. So they'll change ends. As I said, Central Elgin will get whatever win there is. It's kind of a side win, but a little, a little in their favor. So they're second and about 15 after that loss on first down. Scott Nugent coming back into the huddle with the play from the coaches on the sideline. Jacoby wide left and a boomerad wide right. Quarterback throws a quick out to Mark Payne in the flat. He catches the ball, gets about five back to the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to be third and about ten. Tate Lincoln on the tackle. Five yard gain on the play. Third down and ten. Let's go log in at the Arthur Gordon 35 yard line. The center going back to their passing game, and it seems to be. Uh, only five yards in that play, but uh, you say b uh, back to the uh, original line of scrimmage there. Right, they're back to uh, the original line of scrimmage. It's 10 yards to go, but it's third down. That loss of, of five really hurts you. If you can get that kind of yardage on first down, you're looking at second and five, and you've got an option whether to run or pass. So they're in a passing situation right here. Let's see what they do. Slot back right, double wide outs. A boomerad in Sunderland. Quick into Sunderland, and he, he, he uh, couldn't hang on to that one. So we're looking at fourth and ten, and Coach Lindsay calls for the punt team. So you're going to see uh, Mark Payne punting the ball, hopefully putting Arthur Voden back at their goal line. Another quick out there. Uh, Voden was giving the uh, central wide receivers a, a big cushion there. It uh, seems to be a good uh, uh, passing play to run. Sure, he had to get to ten. Nugent threw it to 10 he made he made his route at 10 and it just didn't connect so we're looking at fourth and 10 here again Mark Payne back to punt Hamzy and David Day in the backfield to block good snap from the center Payne gets it away good high spiral and the ball's fumbled and Central Hogan falls on it oh that is a tough break for Arthur Voden at that point their defense came up with a stop a uh, couple of losses on the uh, Titan offense, and the defense got him to punt it, and then to fumble the, the punt like that and give it right back to Central at about your own 20 uh, has got to be tough that's early gonna, in the fourth quarter that's here. That's going to really take the, uh, the steam out of uh, Bowden's offense here. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the coaches of Central Logan want to do. If they want to go back to the run, uh, which they've been fairly successful with, they can, they can do that and punch it in or try and go for a quick score and uh, break the spirit of Arthur Bowden. So we'll have to see what they want to do. They're at the 20, great field position, and uh, about the 18, I guess. Great field position, and we'll see what they do. Will they go to the air quickly with the wind or keep it on the ground? Right up the middle of Vanderwerf, he breaks one, and he's going to get down inside the five. Big hole. That, that seems to really have... Uh Taking the spirit out of uh, Voden's defense there. There's a hole like it, it could have driven a truck through that hole. Well, yeah, it sure has. It, uh, they went right up the middle. Uh, part of their offense, that would have been just a, a 20. Okay. Uh, it's called a 20 to the 2 back in the 0 hole. It goes right up the middle, and he appears to be at about the 5-yard line, 5 or 4, and it's a first down. So uh, an excellent situation for Central Logan here early in the fourth quarter. With the wind up by 14 on the other team's 5-yard line, any coach would love to have that situation. 
Again, an off tackle left. David Day can't get outside. Number 53, Mike McGugan gets a hold of him and brings him down. So there's a tough break for Central Elgin. Nice play by the Arthur Voden defense to Good hold him from going yeah. forward. So a loss on that play brings them back to just outside the 10. So it's second and second and goal from about the 12. Number 11, Sam Boomrod goes wide left, and John John Jacoby goes wide right. Tight end Mark Payne right. They're in a balanced set. Early motion right. Quarterback drops back, throws it over the flat to Mark Payne, and it was knocked down by Tate Lincoln. That was a nice defensive play by Tate. If that ball was a little higher, maybe that was uh, a complete pass, but he makes a great play. Time to jump to get up and, uh, and knock that one down. So a nice play. Mike Sunderland comes in with the play, and, and that was a key play when they had it first and goal in the 10, that play by McGugan to uh, make a loss of about seven and put him back in second and 12. And then the incomplete pass, the block by Tate Lincoln. So this Arthur Voden team hasn't given up. They're in a bad situation right now, but they certainly haven't given up. Nugent rolls out, throws it over the middle to David Day, and he's down to about the three, it appears. Still not a first down, they have to score. It appears that John Jacoby is saying he's about the three-yard line. So, again, Central Logan going to the pass. And it's fourth down and three. And Central Logan's going to call for a timeout. Okay, here's the situation, Ian. Uh, if they can get a field goal, they put it beyond two scores even if Arthur Voden can get two point converts on both and they can't get enough points whereas if they if they score a touchdown it's a moral victory and it might just break the spirit of Arthur Voden here in the fourth quarter as you say the uh, they have been having uh, much luck on this series they uh, maybe going for a, a field goal would be uh, the best play here well you put it beyond two majors uh, two uh, converted touchdowns that would be uh, 16 so I think Coach Lindsay has decided to go for the field goal. Like we said, it puts it to three-score range. Uh, you'd have to get two touchdowns and at least a field goal or a single on a punt. So you have to get at least three possessions. And uh, uh, they're going to count on the fact that the defense will be able to hold them. I mean, they've held them for three quarters to seven points. So they're going to, you know, give them the chance to hold them to, to only one or maybe just two scores in the fourth quarter and uh, complete this victory. David Day, or excuse me, David Lepischek, number 24, in to go for the field goal what appears to be a field goal we can't uh, count out the fake Mike Smith is snapping the ball and Mike Sunderland holding so this is a key play in the game here it could put it could put it uh, 24 7 the balls down it's up it's blocked oh, key block. Mike Sunderland picks it up he's gonna try and he doesn't get around so they blocked that field goal like I said that was a key play for Arthur Bowden it certainly was and it keeps it within two possessions or two plays two scores of tying this game back up. So yeah, Bowden's not out of the game yet, as Bowden, you say. Bowden's not done. They get the ball at their own 10. It's not great field position, but uh, morally they've got to, to uh, think that's a great stand, giving the ball up on their own 20 and uh, not allowing even a point. We'll see if Bowden uh, returns back to their... Uh, some of their passing game that seemed to uh, work fairly well in the, in the third quarter. Right, they certainly broke out with a passing game after only throwing three times in the first half. So they're pretty tight here. They don't have uh, a wide receiver there. All in the backfield, it's a pitch out. Oh, it's a counter up the middle. And number 33, Shane Moyes, I believe, runs up the middle for about five or six. So starting at your own four yard line, down by 14, is not uh, an enviable position for the Arthur Bowden Vikings, but being undefeated all year, they've got to have confidence that they can and make some drives and bust some plays and get back in this game and tie it up. So a gain of about uh, six for Moyes. It's second in a short four. Wide receiver left. Flag on the play, throw over the middle, and it's knocked down. So an early flag as soon as the play started, so it might be an illegal line. Uh, 
lineman or early motion. We'll have to wait and see. Illegal substitution for Arthur Bowden, half the distance to the goal line, so that'll take them back to about the original line of scrimmage at about the four or five. Yeah, we said these little five, five yard uh, penalties in situations like this are a real uh, demoralizer. They sure are, especially when you need, you need a good drive to get things going. So they're back at second and nine, deep in their own territory. Kohler's got the ball, he busts it through the middle, and oh, just brought down at the last second by Scott Helmer or he would have been gone. That was kind of a misdirection play. The quarterback sprints out right and kind of gives a back handoff to Kohler uh, back through the middle. They're trying to suck the central defense into following the quarterback and not necessarily their, their reads. Uh, great play for Arthur Bowden, and it gets out past their 20, and it's a first down. Hey, again, Randy Kohler come through with a great, uh, a great run. If he busts that and Scott Helmer doesn't make that catch, I don't think, there's, I don't think Central would catch him. Uh, all being, you know, facing forward and coming in. And over the pass over the middle here to number 22, and it's incomplete. incomplete. But anyway, back to that play. If Kohler busts that through, he scores. It's now 21-14. It's a whole new ball game. So that was a very important play by Scott Helmer. Okay, Arthur Bowden coming up at their own 20-yard line, second and 10. Wide receiver right, full house backfield again. Quarterback audibleizing, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. A guard, guard sweep up the middle to number 78. That's an inside handoff to the guard. The quarterback drops back, and the left guard comes behind the center and comes upfield. A nice play. They gained about nine. So they're pulling out all the tricks they've got uh, to get something going here. The, the counters and the uh, back handoffs and the guard... The guard sweeps. They got to pull all the plugs now. It, sure. It, it seemed to uh, caught the uh, central defense off guard. Yeah, they caught him. You, you don't very often see a guard or a center get the ball in football and score a touchdown, but it, it's nice to see, and it's fun for the linemen. They don't get a lot of recognition. So, again, a tight set, full house backfield. Again, they ran some kind of, I couldn't see exactly what happened, but 67's and got the ball, and, and I think he's uh, a lineman. Again, they tried maybe the similar play, and now it's going to be fourth and, uh, fourth and about three. Loss of about two there, so fourth and three. Fourth down and two, Arthur Bowden. This is a key, key play for Bowden here now. Arthur Bowden comes out and a wide receiver right. A counter play to Kohler again in that same play, oh, and he's going play, up the big middle. Run here. Number 31, Brandon McVicker's tracking him down, and he's got him about the 32 yard line. Randy so Kohler there's that again. play that we were talking about. Randy Kohler, he's got great speed. Uh, tracked down from behind by number 31, Brandon McVicker. Okay, so on fourth and three, they give it back to their big running back, and he busts it for about 40, 50 yards. He seems to be coming through with all the, uh, or not all, but many of the key uh, key big plays for Voden here. Sure, he's their, he's their main back up the middle and he gets the yards when needed. And uh, right there he uh, got a big run at a key moment in this game for Arthur Voden Vikings. Man down the sideline was number 31, Brandon McVicker, after making that tackle. Fran Ford, one of the central coaches, is now working with him. And Lucas around the outside. David Lepischek in on the tackle. Number 30, Mike Ferenz got a piece of him, slowed him down, and Lepischek finished him off. So the other voting offense starting to kick into gear here. Yeah, they had some key, key blocking for that uh, the run that saved a, a, few yard, a few yard loss. And they end up getting, uh, looks like, about seven or eight on that play. Six or seven. Okay, so we're looking at second and about three for Arthur Voden. Now they're running, they ran a sweep the last play, so we'll have to see what they come out, come in here. They have a slot back right, double tight ends, and a broken tee 
Motion left. They got a wide receiver left now. So a pro set backfield, double slot, and double tight end here. Reverse is coming up. Reverse is coming up. It's one, number 27. He's to the outside. Brought down by Scott Helmer again. So Scott Helmer's in a lot of key tackles where they could have uh, just busted it outside and got a big score. So Another key run. The uh, Voden uh, running game seems to be uh, putting it together in the last... Uh, the last half of the fourth quarter. Well, they are, and they've got the central Elgin defense on their heels because you, you can't start you can't start guessing what's going on. The referees just signal three minutes, so Arthur Voden in, in kind of a hurry-up offense here. Uh, they're going to have to get things going because, as I said earlier, they need two scores. Up the middle to the guard again. Another guard. And, oh, and he was missed, there's and there's a, a touchdown. The there's a flag on the play, though. It appears to be offside against Arthur Voden. We'll have to wait and see the call. The referees are talking to both teams. Three minutes left in the game. Yellow heartbreaker. We're still waiting to see. It appears to be offside against uh, Arthur Voden. And, and as Scott Helmer's indicating, they can be thankful for that penalty because with three minutes still to go, if that had gone in, uh, Central Elgin would have needed to get a first down or two to maintain the ball. So that's a big play. Okay, inside three minutes here. It's now first and 15 for Arthur Voden. That was a good play, though. They gave it to the guard, and he went inside the line to the left side, and nobody expects a guard to have the ball. And you kind of look right by him to the running backs, and he's by you before you know it. So first and 15, Arthur Voden. Wide receivers both sides, so they may be looking to pass. Drops back, throws it over the middle. And it's incomplete. They've tried that play now. Uh, I believe it's the third time this half. And it's been a tough one. It's been there, but it uh, just hasn't clicked. It has been there. I mean, over the flat, Central Elgin's probably spreading out their defense a bit sideways and backing up a bit, having this lead. Not giving up yards, but you get a quick hitter to a tight end over the middle, that's tough to stop. So uh, Central Elgin has avoided that. If they do get that, that's only maybe three or four or five yards. But, you know, if you can break a tackle in that close, you break one or two tackles, you might get a score. So... Arthur Voden now trying to uh, figure out what they can do quickly against Central. They've tried a few uh, trick plays, and they've worked pretty well. So you've got to start wondering what they're going to do next. Quarterback back to pass, throwing deep over the middle, and it's incomplete. It was intended for number 27, Brad Thompson, and he appeared to have uh, broken containment on the defensive backs, and the ball was thrown in, and he went out. So a little miscommunication there, but... Uh, it's got to make the offensive coaches feel good for Arthur Vode, knowing they can get the ball deep. Their line can block that long, and the receivers can get open. So we'll see what they're going to do here. It's third and 15, so uh, it's probably going to go back in the air again. They come up with a uh, pro set backfield, number 33 wide left and 27 wide right, Thompson. Pitch out to the right side to number 30. He's one-handing it. He's going to throw it, and he's brought down by number 56, Dave Van Burkle. So that looked like that was going to be a hitch pitch pass where they pitched it out to the running back. He rolls out to the right and throws it and just never seemed to get the opportunity. Dave Van Burkle came in from his left cornerback position and uh, got a hold of Lucas and brought him down. So a key play. It's now third and about uh, 25, so loss of, a loss of about 10 there. Yeah, it looks like they were trying to pull all the uh, stops and try all their uh, fancy plays, but uh, the Central uh, defense read that read that fairly well. Well, as we know, and, and the Central Elgin team knows, that Lucas is very quick, so when he gets the ball and starts that sweep look, you have to respect that and come in. He was hoping for that, uh, to, to bring in the deep backs and throw it over the top, but he never got a chance to get outside far enough. So a great play by the cornerback, Dave Van Burkle, on the left side there. Paul Oaks and Scott Masker trying to fire up the defense here for Central Elgin. They've got him in a great position here. Fourth down, 25 yards to go, two touchdown lead. You know Voden obviously is going to go for it here. Uh, but you can give him five or 10 or 15, but don't give him all of it, and you get the ball back. So good position for Central Elgin. Jake Weeb comes in with the play. And uh, it's going to have to be a, a reverse or a hitch pass or a long pass or something because just a, you wouldn't think a straight run is going to do it. He's back in punt position. I doubt he's going to punt. 
He's loosening up his leg as if he's going to punt. The snap's good. He's throwing it, and it's incomplete. Incomplete to number 30, Lucas, and it appears that number 56, Dave Van Burkle, was in there to make the tackle. Just as the ball got there, he tackled him. So inside three minutes, uh, Central Elgin takes over on downs at their own 35-yard line with a 21-7 lead. And uh, a little bit of a celebration is beginning on the, the Central Elgin sideline. This game's not over, but with the ball, two scores, and inside three minutes, they will probably be able to take care of it here to take the championship. Yeah, that was a... Uh a tough play for uh, the voting offense there. They, 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 as you say, they had to try on that uh, fake punt, but it uh, didn't materialize. Yeah, they had to try something, didn't they? Down two scores inside three minutes. So here we go. It's going to be probably just some running plays. Run right, and Mike Hamsey uh, goes around the right end. He's brought down by number 53, uh, Mike McGugan. Sam Boomrod brings the play, and it's second and about 10. Might have gained one. No, they didn't gain anything. So it's second and ten for Central Elgin. Hand off to David Day around the left side. He cuts it back to the right side and gains about eight. He's going to be short of the first down, but it looks like it's going to be third and maybe one or two. So we'll see where the referees spot the ball. Yeah, during this game, uh, Wade Central hasn't seemed to have any problem uh, overall running or, or passing the game. I, I guess because they've had a, a good mix in, uh, in keeping the, uh, the runs and, and passes uh, mixed up. Well, yeah, you don't want to run first down, second down, and have to pass third down. You want to pass first down and run third down sometimes. You want to mix it up. Keep the defense uh, guessing what you're going to do, and if you can do that, you're going to be a little more effective with your running plays. So we're looking at third and one. Handoff left side, David Day stumbles, and he's brought down. Good penetration there by the uh, Bowden defense. Good penetration, and then fill by number 43. So it's fourth and one, and... Fourth and one, and I imagine Central will punt. They're with the wind a little bit here, and they want to just put the ball back and make Bowden go a long way to get their first score of what they hope is going to be two scores. There's one minute and 15 seconds remaining. We just heard from the referees. So a little over a minute here to go, and Central are all going to be punting. And, uh, well, Bowden defense did their job again. They stopped the Central offense again. Um, to get the ball back for their offense, but it might be just a little too late. Mark Payne back to back to kick. Good snap. Payne gets the ball away. It's an end over end kick. That's a short kick that'll probably be blown down. Yes, it is. So they'll get it at a, just inside midfield of the Central Elgin 54 yard line. They're starting with the ball in good position anyway, as you say in the, uh, the right about midfield there. Right, just inside midfield. The minute flags up, so uh, Arthur Bowden's going to have to throw the ball and uh, use their timeouts well. And if they do happen to get a score here, they'll have to try an onside kick, get it back, and throw it again. On running plays, uh, in the last in the last three minutes, the clock stops. But as soon as the referee blows the t the time in or the play in, the clock starts again. So on uh, turnover, on uh, change of possession or an incomplete pass or out of bounds, it, uh, the clock doesn't start until. The play is in. So the quarterback drops back to pass. Number 19 throws it over the middle to number 36. Randy Kohler, he's going around the left end. He's being chased from behind. David Lepischek comes up and makes a great tackle at the 34-yard line. Well executed screen play there. So that was a, a student body screen is what, what uh, I would call that. There's a late flag there thrown down. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Somebody's uh, discussing something with the referee, I believe. Again, Kohler on that big play, uh, grabbing that pass with one hand and, and, and pulling it in, and then a uh, big uh, 20 or 30 yard run. That's right. That was a, a full offensive line screen. The quarterback dropped back, let the whole defensive line come to him, and then threw the ball 
to uh, Kohler, and he had the whole offensive line in front of him, so a big play. Drops back to pass number 19. He throws it short to number 36, Kohler, and he can't hang on to it, so it's an incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10. The fans behind us are starting to sing the bye-bye song. I don't recognize them. Uh, I think they're from Woodstock, actually, so just wishing they could be a part of this game today. To get here, the Central Elgin Seniors beat Parkside last week 21-9 uh, after falling behind 9-0 early in the first quarter. And Arthur Voden beat Tilsonburg. Uh, I don't know the exact score. I think it was 41-0. Thank you by my statistician here, 41-0. So they came into this beating a couple of good uh, senior teams. But this was the expected matchup coming into the, the Elgin, Elgin season this year. Ball is thrown over the middle to number, I can't read the number, but he's got it at about the goal line. He fumbled it. And Central Logan's got the ball. So it just goes to show you that nothing seems to be going right for Arthur Voden today. Seems to be happening all game. A well, well thrown pass by uh, Voden quarterback. That's right. That was a good completion into that wind right down to the goal line. And that was a good, that was a good catch. And then the hit knocked the ball loose. So that's a, that's a tough play right in the goal line. I mean, they were running out of time. But still, they score their onside quick. You don't know what can happen. But that's just the way it's been going for Arthur Voden today. So Central Elgin takes over after that fumble recovery. Scott Nugent running on field. And uh, they appear to be about their four or five yard line. Okay. Minute flags uh, up. Uh, don't know the exact amount of time. It's got to be inside 30 seconds. So Tough break for Voden again. When things don't uh, go right, the... Uh don't go right big time by the looks of it here. Well, yeah, when it rains, it pours, and this just doesn't seem to be Arthur Voden's day. Uh, compliments to Arthur Voden, though, on their season. They were undefeated. They beat Central Log in 35-14 uh, in their first encounter. So, I mean, it's just today was not their day. I mean, it's not like they were uh, uh, overmatched or anything. They were undefeated in the season, first place. Uh, a great year for Arthur Voden. So it'll be second and about 10. Central gains about a yard. No, they lost about a yard, so second and 11, sorry. Coming up to the line of scrimmage with uh, three running backs in the backfield, like you can assume they're just going to hand it off and make sure they fall on the ball. And they're going to bust one to the outside. David Day breaks it outside, gets a block, kicks it outside further. Going down the sideline, he's brought down from behind. Really ran with his blocker well there. Yeah, he, he, he busted it outside, waited for his blocker to catch up, let his blocker do his job, and then cut up and uh, got outside again. So an excellent run. Excellent run. Nice blocking by the offensive line there. The guards, uh, Jason Canna and Jeff McIntyre. In talking with the running backs before the game, they... Uh, we're talking about the offensive line and how much of a, a, a great job they did this year because they realized that if they don't get the blocking from the offensive line, they don't get a chance to run the ball. And when they get great blocks, they look great. So uh, as one coach told me one time, the offensive line runs the ball. It's just simply the running backs carry it. So a subtle difference. They got to work together, and they're both doing a great job this, this game here. There's a overzealous uh, blitz there by 43 on Voden. Well, what he's trying to do is he's trying to make something happen, trying to stir up the uh, the offensive set of Central to make them cough the ball up. He's just trying anything right now and didn't quite time that correctly. So I think this is going to be the last play of the game. Uh, quarterback may just fall on or he may hand it off. Hands it off to the fullback, Vanderwerf, goes up the middle, and he's tackled, and that's it. That's a lot of business going on underneath that huddle, and the Central Elgin team is celebrating. So, at the end of this 1992 schedule, we had the two teams, first and second, Arthur Voden and Central Elgin, coming into this championship game, and Central Elgin prevailed here with a, a strong 21-7 victory over a very powerful Arthur Voden football team. Well executed game by uh, Central Central Elgin. Uh, some tough breaks for Voden, but uh, anyway, the, the Wade said the score ends up 21-7 for uh, Central.
it was just it was just one of those days for Arthur Bowden that that uh, they dropped the ball when they should they uh, needed to catch it and a drop punt and then a fumble in the goal line things like that just didn't seem to go their way and it was a very good football game uh, a couple of breaks had a gun for Arthur Bowden it might have been a, a different score but uh, a very dejected Arthur Bowden team over there and a very very happy Central Elgin team who who gets uh, their Oxford second Oxford Elgin crown in two years uh, two years ago they beat Huron Park here 41 to 7 I believe or 41 nothing and then last year with the strike season Elgin County didn't get a chance to win it but they were well on their way to win a, winning a second so this has uh, got to be very uh, a very happy moment for the Central Elgin coaches to know after last year when they had it taken away from them the potential to come back and do it against all odds when they'd lost Arthur Bowden earlier in the season so 